it's always going to be people, processes, and technology. Those are the three things you need to improve within an organization and keep in alignment and, and have a kind of a holistic viewpoint when it comes to beginning your zero trust journey. Because people is more of, it, it ultimately comes down to a cultural and change management cha uh, that the organization needs to need to kind of get over. Um, and it's still process. It's still process is going on, even still on the government side. It, it kind of to your point, um, uh, Carson, that, that there's a, some functions still have a disconnect, and there's there's a there's a reason why we emphasize the need for collaboration for zero trust to be successful. Um, a, a case in point kind of situation. I was re recently working with a client in the government sector, and and, and I had them perform kind of a, a, an assessment of their zero trust maturity, right? And the difference between how the C level leadership and top tier leadership viewed their maturity of the architecture versus the more technical management level was very different. You know, C-level saw it, and they, they, they believe their architecture was still beginner. But the more technical, well-versed backgrounds and architects, they viewed it as intermediate, which told me, you guys are not talking. There's, there's a lack of understanding of what are the capabilities that exist already in an architecture that perhaps you're just not leveraging in the most effic effective and efficient manner. Yes, there's emerging technologies out there, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out and procure that technology to begin your zero trust journey. You start leveraging the tools and, and, and solutions you have in place. And, and reassessing how you are uh, deploying that. 